Hello and welcome back to the Women's Football Chat. It is game week 10 of the WSL season and we're here once again with our predictions. We're going to run through all six games from this game week, give some predictions and I'm sure a lot of them you're going to disagree with. So get your comments below, in the comments below, predict the games and uh, yeah, see how many we get right. So... Harry, let's start then with the Saturday. We would do it in an, any other order than with the first game. It's Tottenham versus Arsenal, a London derby. A very exciting game, right? Yeah, it should be. I'm really looking forward to it. Obviously, Arsenal, they did well in last week's London derby. They're looking for 2-2. Two to two. This one should be much easier for them. It certainly should be. Now, we are live for the game as well, so please do join us from quarter to 12 on Saturday. Very, very excited for it. It should be a cracking game. Should be a good one. Tottenham, obviously, last time out was a disappointing game at home to Manchester United. They really, really struggled in that game. They've not had the quality, really, with a lot of midfield injuries recently. And But they should be able to get up for this. They've got Arsenal. It's a tough match, but it's also a derby. And you get that extra bit of spice in a derby, that extra motivation. So can that spurn the victory? Or will Arsenal be simply too strong? What do you think? I think Arsenal will blow Tottenham out of the water. I will go 4-0 to the Gunners. Wow. Um, I think it'll be a very convincing performance. They look like they are really up for it this season and they want to push Chelsea all the way. I will go another Russo double, a goal from Mead and a goal from... Oh, I've forgotten her name now. Uh, Kim Little. Fair enough. You make a lot of good points there. However... I think we've been bigging up. We did a video this week. We spoke about the WSL title race. We're going, oh, we've got a tight one here. Arsenal, Chelsea, level City, three points behind. I think Arsenal will stumble at the next game with Tottenham. I think it'll be Tottenham 1, Arsenal 1. Not a lot of basis for this. It's a bold one, I agree. But Arsenal are a very good team. They should be winning. I think they'll bottle, though, against Tottenham and give Chelsea back the lead of the title. Or lead of the WSL. I will say Tottenham's goal scorer will be Marta Thomas. Obviously, it was good to see Beth England back against mm. Man United. The one positive for Tottenham of that game. But I think Thomas will still start this match. And then I will say Arsenal equaliser through Vivian Miedema, another striker who should be back from injury by this Saturday's game. So that's a big thing yeah. for Arsenal. Now, be interesting. We, we are recording before these midweek fixtures, the Conti Cup game, so we don't know if she's played in that yet. If she has, though, that could be a big return for Arsenal. On to Sunday then, and five games starting with Manchester United versus Liverpool. It's not the only Man United versus Liverpool game on this mm. Sunday. It's probably the least exciting one, it has to be said, but and the one that's weighted in the other favour. United are definitely the favourites here. The strong performance last time out against Tottenham, and they have had quite a decent season. They're now only four points behind Chelsea, which is quite impressive given their mixed start to this campaign. Liverpool, well, they're not really in any serious European or title fight I would say they're still quite off that but they are fighting with Tottenham for fifth and a win here could be crucial it's going to be difficult especially away from home how do you see this panning out Harry? I think United are going to prove why they can't be involved with the other top three in the title oh. race I am going to go Manchester United 2 Liverpool 2 you know it's been mixed results for United I think they're going to follow up a convincing win with a pretty poor draw I think they will go 2 nil up at home through Toon and uh, Paris, but Liverpool will respond back in the second half with a bit of a collapse from Manchester United with Haug and Van der Sand. Fair enough. I think that's quite a bold prediction, I have to say. United are a very strong team. They seem to have their act together at the moment. Now, there's nothing really that could derail their season apart from the potential departure from Mary Earps. I'm sure we'll be talking about that as we get into January, but... In the meantime, United, I think they are much stronger than this Liverpool side, and I think they'll get the win. I'm going to go Manchester United 3, Liverpool 1. It's not a very exciting prediction. It's not a very out there prediction, but it is a sensible one after my first one. I should probably go sensible here. And I will say goals from Jesse Ferreira. Hasn't got enough yet for Manchester United, but I think she'll score this weekend. Hinata Miyazawa, another one who hasn't really hit the ground running. And then I'll say Katie Zellum from the spot. And then the Liverpool leveller. I was going to say Shanice van der Sander, but since you've already gone for her, I will go for, is it Sophie Holbinger? Yeah. Mine up Sophie. Oh, Laura Holbinger. Okay, middle infielder. Very good player. I think she will bag here. She's been probably Liverpool's best player of the season yeah. so far. So I will, I'll back her to score here. Our next is a, a well, the one o'clock kickoff. I do love the staggered kickoffs in the WSL. Oh, yeah. It means you can watch as much of the football as you want. And, uh, and yeah, we get a good game here. Everton versus Manchester City. Clearly, the away side are the huge favourites. City only three points off top now and have had a really decent campaign. And Everton, well, it's a very different story there towards the bottom of the table. But they could provide an upset. What, what do you think? 
I mean, City, yeah, uh, they struggled last time out, but managed to drag three points across the line thanks to Lauren Hemp. And I think it'll be a similar situation here. I don't think they'll go behind, but I'm saying it'll be nil-nil going to the last few minutes, and I will go Lauren Hemp once again to get City a 1-0 win and drag them across the line. Fair enough. Yeah, Everton, I mean, the manager was, I can't, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, unfortunately, but the Everton manager was saying in the press conference and the pre-match stuff that actually Everton Man City is a bigger game than Everton Liverpool, or a more important game for their season. I was like, what? You're not competing with either of them, really. If anything, Liverpool's a closer game. That's more important for you. But no idea what he meant by that. And I think his comments will be really shown up for Manchester City score four. I was Everton nil. Man City four. City a very strong team. And I think looking at the way they tore apart Tottenham the other week, I know Villa was a not a comfortable win. But the thing is, while Aston Villa have had a really difficult campaign, they are still a good team. And so I think that could potentially be to blame as to why they didn't get more. I will say 4-0 City here, though, and I will say Laura Coombs, Lauren Hemp, Chloe Kelly, and I don't want to say Khadija Shaw because I want Lauren Jones to go top goal scorer of the WSL. I will say Alexandri, if she's, she is back from suspension now, isn't she? Yeah. I feel like she's been suspended every week of this yeah. season, but she hasn't. She's has only one red card. But, yeah, I will yeah, I'll go 4-0 City and a comfortable win for the citizens. I'm next. Speaking of comfortable wins, Bristol City, a big one here. Bottom, well, we're bottom of the table. Climbed up to 11th last week, so currently not. Uh, I've lifted off the bottom of the table. They welcome Chelsea in what should be a very, very difficult game. It's their toughest test yet, and they've they've shown against Manchester City that they aren't really of the re required quality, but they've matured into the WSL. Big point against Liverpool last weekend. Quite a good performance that. So can they take advantage from that going into this Chelsea game and get something from it? What do you think? I mean, Chelsea, their players are going to be very fired up. I'm sure that they've been put through the bloody rinser by Emma Hayes. Yeah, and we felt her wrath. We haven't seen the Harkin game yet, of course, either, but I would think Chelsea are going to be up for that one. I think Chelsea want to end this this year on a high, um, well, in terms of domestically and... You know, and continentally. Two wins over Harkin yeah. would pr pretty much put them through. But I think for this game... I, I'm not going to something silly because Bristol City have actually done pretty well this year. They haven't looked completely rough. So I'm not going to go something completely outrageous. I will go for a modest 5 0 to Chelsea. Um, I'm not going to go outrageous, but they are going to get 5 -nils. I know, but we, you know, Pitt might go for 7s or 8s. I don't think it'll be that bad. I'll go 5 0, two, two goals in the first, three in the second half. I will go Lauren James, Fran Kirby. Sam Kerr, Fishel off the bench, and Beaver Jones off the bench. Fair enough. Obviously, that would match the tally that City notched up against Brittle City. I will say 7-0 Chelsea, because I think they've got a big point to prove this weekend. So a bit more outrageous, as you were saying. I will go for a Lauren James brace, a Sam Kerr hat-trick, a goal from Jess Carter, and a nice. goal from... I was going to say Melanie Leopold, but I don't think she's fit. No. I will say... Sioska, Sioska Nuskin. Yeah. And a bit, she's been in great goals for form this season, so not outrageous prediction there yeah. at all. Seven of Chelsea, they'll be keen to get back into winning ways after a very, very poor London derby away in Arsenal. Mm -hmm. Up next, it's Leicester City versus West Ham. West Ham slipped the bottom of the table last weekend as Bristol City drew with Liverpool. So quite poor for them. They need to pick up their form soon. Leicester, they started really as a surprise package. They've actually put up some decent performances this campaign. I mean, even the Chelsea game, they got two goals in, given they conceded five. But they scored twice against Chelsea. Yeah. It's quite an impressive feat. So not a bad side. They should have it easy here against West Ham, right? I mean, I think so. I think it'll be an interesting one here. Leicester last week did really well to take the lead against Brockwood. They played Brighton. Was it Brighton? Um, two and Latin turn and scored yeah, two and Latin. Yeah, Brighton got two and uh, yeah, yeah. 81st and 87th or something like that. They Everton, did they? Weren't Everton and Brighton? Might have been. I can't oh, remember now. I can't remember. I've got me something in blue teams. I'm going to go for it. I'll go for one every week. Leicester City nil. West Ham United nil. Yeah, fair, fair enough. I think my prediction is probably going to go on the same lines. I just don't see any goals in this game. No. Neither side have been particularly prolific going for us. Leicester have been all right, but there's no one that stands out to me as a goal scorer. So I think I'm going to match you for prediction there, the three o'clock kickoff. Leicester nil, West Ham nil. Neither side's really particularly impressive. And actually, West Ham's goalkeeper, uh, Mackenzie Arnold. Yeah. I think she'll have a really good game. I think Leicester will dominate yeah. large portions of this game, there but is... West Ham will hang on. 
has to be a nil nil this year. Spencer. There will be a nil nil. Has there not been one? I will, well, I, pred- I will predict a nil nil. Okay. Right. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. I mean, we've only been doing predictions since yeah. game week seven, eight, something yeah, like that. Seven. So, yeah, it's uh, not not too bad innings yet. But you have predicted a nil nil every week. Final game then of the game week, the quarter seven kickoff. I do find this quite a weird kickoff time that we jump from five to quarter seven. Sorry, three to quarter seven, but. Fair enough. Aston Villa versus Brighton. Obviously, Aston Villa have endured quite a difficult start to campaign, but some positive signs in recent weeks. They do need to start winning some games and pick up some points, though, definitely, just to put themselves safe from the relegation. Brighton, they've been quite good this season, actually. I think they made some good signs over the summer, and Elizabeth Turland has been phenomenal. So, yeah, I mean, I think this will be high scoring, whatever happens. What do you think, Harry? I'm going to go for exactly the same thing that happened in Brighton's last game. I think Vill- and Villa's game as well. I think they'll start strong Aston Villa. I think they will take the lead through Rachel Daly. But again, a poor second half for them. And I think this game will be drawn level by Elizabeth Turland in the last few minutes. And once again, numerous times this season, Villa throwing away points at the death. They're going to do it again here. Aston Villa won, Brighton won. Yeah, fair enough. I'm going to back a few more goals, I think. I'm going to go Aston Villa... Three Brighton two, and I think Ooh. actually Aston Villa got two goals ahead mm. through Jordan Nobbs and Kenza Darley. Jordan yeah. Nobbs still plays for the right. Yeah, I would then say Brighton will get two through Elizabeth Turland and Katie Robinson, and then Aston Villa will get a late winner through. Is it Demi Pacheco? I think what her first name is now, but I know oh. it's definitely Pacheco. I will say her to get her because she's. I think she's been Villa's best player at time of season. She's definitely been a little bit too aggressive in terms of her attacking and uh, defensive responsibilities. Definitely yeah. very attacking fullback. I think she'll actually make use of that this weekend and get a goal. So yeah, there are predictions for this game week. An exciting game week of action. Now, of course, as I say, we're live for Tottenham versus Arsenal on Saturday. We're also live for next Wednesday. Yeah. Next Wednesday's game between Harkin and Chelsea in the Women's Champions League. So I'm very excited for that. Obviously, we were live last night when this goes out on Friday live last night. But unless you want to go back and watch us retrospectively, you already know the score there. So, yeah, check out the stream on Saturday. Please do hop in. It was great seeing so many people there last Sunday for Chelsea Arsenal. Hopefully, we can get similar numbers this Saturday. Then next week, as I say, Champions League football, the final games of the year. And then we'll be back for the FA Cup, I think it is. FA Cup weekend on the 14th of Jan. So, yeah, there's a, it's not a lot of... Uh, obviously, we've got, we've got the winter break now for the WSL, so a while until there's any more games. I'm glad we do have that FA Cup, because like, we won't have anything until the 21st. So, yeah, see you then. The, uh, yeah, two more streams to end off the year. We'll obviously have videos going out as normal, but this is our last WSL predictions of the year. So, yeah, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time. See ya.